Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. In this video, I want to explain the new armor, charm, and decoration system because it is so cool. And I think uh, everyone will be very interested to find out how this works. Uh, they've actually changed it quite a bit from previous games. I'll warn you on that right away. So the first thing we'll talk about here is armor and the way that they've changed that. So we're gonna go to forge equipment, go down to armor. Let's go down to low rank here. Now, if you notice, as you get into sort of uh, the monsters like the Rathian, here are her parts. One thing I really do like is you can now preview um, pieces and parts without buying it. So you can do this. Very nice. We got Zizi Yaku. And you can totally mix and match and figure out your fashion hunter and then register them as wishlist items before you even have to craft them. How cool is that? Okay, so if you notice with the Rathian, on the right hand side we have skills and this headpiece gives health boost level 1. Yes, that means that every single piece of armor activates a skill. So we head and press the center button here. Now we could be happy with just the level one tier uh, skill, or we can have additional pieces of armor with health boost to get that up to the higher tiers. Okay, let's see, like the arm is poison attack. So that's only a three uh, level three tier skill it goes up to. Poison resistance is three tiers as well, and recovery up is three tier. These are all three tier skills except for this one. Um, is actually a level 4 tier. You'll notice, uh, it'd be depending on the skills, there may only be one tier, maybe 3, 4, 5, or 6. It really depends on the skill. So that's really cool and dandy. So you may be thinking to yourself, well now everyone's going to do mixed sets, because what if I want health boost, but I could care less about the quality of my herbs. And let's say I want to go down to Tsuziyaku and I want constitution. So I have less uh, stamina depletion. Well, yeah, you can totally do that. You can... Do a set like that if you want to, that works. But as you get later in the game, they do give set bonuses. So let's go down here to, let's say, Legiana. Legiana, you'll notice it says set bonus skills. If we have three or more parts from this monster on, we get an additional skill. And for this one is good luck, so that gives us an increased chance of quest rewards. Very nice. Uh, Dogaron gives us punishing draw, that's sweet. So we get a stun effect to draw attacks and a little bit boost in our attack power and so forth. So there is a lot of reason for having sets. Now you guys may be a little upset that the armor only has one version now because you don't have the gunner version and the blade master version so we only get one variation. Well guess what? Capcom thought of that and they've now treated us to what is essentially sort of the gunner versions of these things but using high rank parts. Okay so let's go down to something like Anjanath. So in high rank there is two things. There is the Anjanath Alpha and the Anjanath Beta. The difference being here is whether or not that equipment has a slot for a decoration. A decoration is just a gemstone that has a skill point in it. So for example, that like health boost that we had before, we might have a health boost decoration, which we can put inside an armor slot that will increase that skill even further. So if we notice here on the alpha ones, these are all, they don't have any decoration slots whatsoever. You'll see that decoration slot underneath that defense on the right hand side of the screen. There's no slots at all. But what we do get is we get more than one skill on each piece. If we go down to beta though, we notice that we now are giving up one of the free decorations that are set in the armor and we get an open slot that we can use for whatever we want instead. So we can choose from this or that. So you wanna see like how different they look. That is the alpha and that is the beta. So this is kind of like the blade master and gunner armor um, just done differently because of slots. Let's check out Puke Puke, shall we? Versus th this. So yeah, so this is like really the Blade Master. It's kind of like Gunner in a way. It's very nice. I like it a lot. So this is really cool because decorations, which I'll explain in a minute, are very hard to get in this game. They are kind of like the new charms. Uh, so decorations are not something you're going to have a lot of. So if you if you like sort of the, let's say, Marathon Runner and special ammo boost, and you're kind of like, you know what? I like that. It's, it's a good set, and I think I'll use that on my weapon. Go ahead and buy the alpha piece, and there you already don't have to worry about buying a decoration, it's already set. If you have a decoration you already want, or you don't really care about that extra skill, like fire attack, we don't need it. We can go down here and buy this and we get an open slot. Another cool thing they added to the high rank armor is, you notice on the set bonus skills, there's now an extra tier. So for two pieces of armor, we get the Odogara Mastery, which is great. And then for four pieces of the armor, we get an additional skill, which is really powerful. So this this is crazy. This is my favorite set in the entire game. It gives you, I mean, that's fine, the straw attack, but this is the best. 
Odagono Mastery. Weapon sharpness does not decrease for a set time after sharpening. That is amazing. It lasts for like an entire minute where you don't lose sharpness. So for weapons that are high raw but very low sharpness, that's an awesome skill. So very cool. I love the way that they did Alpha and Beta and we still get uh, sort of the variants on the armor. So cool. <laughs> Okay, so that's armor, let's check out charms. So if we go to forge equipment and go down to charms, we can now forge these. And these are really hard to make and upgrade. These are like an additional piece of armor, but it's based on a skill. Um, so you can equip one of these only, of course. Uh, that's always kind of been how it's been in the series. Um, if you notice here, there is a charm for every major skill, um, quite a few. Um, and they're actually pretty hard to make. Um, let's take a look, let's go down a little bit. Stuff like uh, Master's Charm, this is the Critical Eye one, so this will give you Critical Eye Affinity plus 3%, which of course helps you do critical attacks more often. Um, this takes an Odogaron Plate, which is the most rare material you can get from a low rank Odogaron. Now one of the cool things is on the charms is you can actually upgrade them as well. So let's say we have my uh, Divine Blessing Charm. You can upgrade up to three times. Um, they take some really rare materials. Um, so I haven't upgraded that one because I need those things. But look at stuff like this. Guard uh, level three. Guard being for Lance. If you want to have a stronger guard without losing stamina. To get up to level three, I need a Valhazak gem. That's like one of the end game elder dragons. <laughs> so yeah, this is a very nice long term goal. The cool thing with these though is that these will always stay with you and you can use them with any armor set. So yeah, that's pretty cool, and that is charms. Okay, so with all this talk about the armor, you have the alpha, which has, you know, skills built in. You have beta, which has available open slots for decorations, and charms, which can be upgraded as well. You're probably wondering now, how do I get decorations? Well, decorations in this game are sort of the end game content in a way. Uh, decorations are earned, they're not, they're not found. You get them in your quest rewards. So as you play the end quest or the high rank quest, you'll earn a random uh, decorations for rewards. So when you want to set your decoration, you go over here to equipment and you'll notice that when you have uh, armor that has slots, which is again, the beta uh, armor um, or some special alpha ones as well, look at the slot on the right hand side of the screen. You'll notice there's like a little white dot on the bottom there. That means it can hold a level one decoration. That has three, three dots, so it can hold a level three decoration. And this one has two slots so it can hold a level two decoration. So it's very easy now to understand because each of the decorations you see in my list here have a number after it, which tells you the power of the slot that it needs. Very, very easy to understand. Now, just because it's one and two doesn't mean that two is automatically better. For example, fortitude is an amazing skill and only requires a level one slot. Um, so yeah, decorations are great. But if you notice, I don't have that many decorations. And the reason for that is one, they're very hard to get because they're only in quest rewards and I've only been plowing through to the end of the game for my review. Um, the other reason is because I wanted decorations that I like. And in order to do that, at the very end of the game, you'll unlock a new type of investigation called Tempered Monsters. There's no real story behind it, but Tempered Monsters are like high rank plus. They're even more powerful than high rank. Um, they have very strict conditions, like you can only faint one or two times. Um, they're enraged a lot, they do big attacks a lot. Uh, they're just really difficult and <laughs> really fun to hunt. Um, so these tempered monsters, if you notice down there under rewards, has two purple slots. What those are is it gives you shards. Now when you hunt the tempered monsters, you do get decorations and rewards, but the shards, you go over here to the Elder Melder, there's the first Wyvarian ritual and you can then spend sort of uh, multiple decorations, throw them in a pot and get out a random new one. You know what the heck with it, we'll just, we'll throw something in there. Um, Tremor Resistance, uh, might need that for Devil Joe, but sure, you know what, I'll throw it in there. And Water Resistance, okay, so that's 12 points, so we get one random, and we can keep this going. Let's hit Meld here and see what we get. And it does save your game though, so no cheating, guys. Come on! Something good, please. What do I get? Frostral, ice attack, meh, I don't really need it. <laughs> but 
But you see here, it's like the ultimate gotcha system. You throw in one, two, or three decorations and you get one new one or two new ones. So you're gonna quickly run out of gems. So the end game grind is really going to be fighting tempered monsters and earning decorations and crystals so that you can get new decorations. Decorations though are very powerful. Uh, again, look at my set here. I have the elemental uh, elementless jewel, which boosts my attack power because I don't have an element on it. Uh, I got flight, which gives my jumping attack power plus 10. So there are plenty of skills that activate its final tier with just level one. So very worthwhile indeed. Um, and then of course, because of the way the new system works, um, you can have a lot of skills active at once. So for example, mine, I have Odogoro Mastery, le level two and four, Critical Eye four, Attack three, Speed Sharpen three, Weakness Exploit two, Airborne, Fortify, Constitution, Quick Sheath, and <laughs> Non-Elemental Boost. Phew. So yeah, lots of micro stuff um, to really tweak your Hunter. I, I love it. It's so good. There's nothing that is really wasted. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, just checking out the new armor system, uh, the crafting system for the charms, and also decorations. Who would have ever guessed that that would be the end game? Anyways, it's a wonderful system. I can't wait to see what type of decorations are out there as people start playing and using that pot. Uh, yeah, and let me know down in comments below if you're seeing this after the game is released. We can hear what type of cool stuff that you found. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, happy hunting.